All right, in this uh, next video, we're going to make a, an illustrator shape that resembles the iris of a camera or some kind of vortex or pinwheel. Uh, it uses really just the ellipse tool, the rotate transformation, and the pathfinder, uh, and it makes some pretty cool results. Um, and it looks just like this. All right, so let's make this iris or pinwheel thing in Illustrator. Uh, start a new file. Uh, you can really use any size. I have 1920 by 1080 here. You could use certainly use paper size, whatever size that you want. Um, that's not important, but what is important is that you go to the view menu and you show the grid and you go to the view menu and you click on snap to grid and that way when we are uh, arranging things and moving things around and rotating things, we can position them exactly. And this will, this, if you do this correct, it will turn out perfect. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is take the zoom tool and zoom into a one by one uh, grid square. I'm just gonna click on the screen a couple times uh, to get us there. And zoom in nice and close and personal. Um, that way uh, you can really see what you're working on. All right. Let's get to our default colors. You're gonna type D on your keyboard or you can click on this little icon here. The default colors are a white fill and a black stroke. And for this particular um, uh, exercise, it's uh, easier if we start with a shape that's filled as opposed to one that doesn't have a fill. So make sure white uh, is your fill color. Now you can take your ellipse tool and we're gonna draw a circle within this one by one grid square area. Uh, you can start on the upper left and drag it over to the right and then down to the bottom to make a circle. Um, you can certainly hold your shift key down to keep things um, in this one by one ratio, but you don't need to because you have snap to grid turned on. So either way is perfectly fine. Um, all right, once you're done with that, and you'll see that this is still selected, you're gonna hold your alt or option key down and you're going to drag a copy over to the right. Uh, holding the Alt or Option key down just allows you to do a quick copy by clicking and dragging. Um, we're going to drag this over, I'm sorry, to the left, uh, and we want to align the vertical center with this uh, darker gray grid line. So, this, so the center of this circle is aligned with the left-hand side of your original circle. With this still selected, you're going to take your Rotate tool, um, and what we want to do is we want to rotate it around this top point, but as you can see, when we start any of our transformations, uh, the reference point is always in the center of the object. Uh, so to change that and to allow us to type in an actual number, as opposed to just kind of winging it on the screen, you're going to hold your Alt or Option key down and then click on this top point. And what that's going to do is it's going to put the reference point wherever you click and it's also going to bring up the dialog box. So let's hold the Alt key, or Option key down, click on this top uh, point on your circle, and let go of both your Alt or Option key and your mouse button or trackpad button. And now you have the rotate transformation pops up here. Now for this angle, it can be anything between one and 90. Um, you can even go above that, but it just gives you some weirder results. Um, so 30, 60, 70, 75, 80, it really doesn't matter. Um, what this does is it just gives you a different shape to work with. The larger the number, the less space you're going to have in the center of your shape. Uh, I'm gonna do 75 for this, uh, and I'm going to click on OK. All right, so that's my, uh, my first copy is positioned exactly where I want it to be. And now what I want to do is I want to make a copy of this, a rotated copy that's rotated around the center of this original circle. Uh, when I click on this original circle, you'll see that there's a reference point uh, for the center of the selection and that lines up exactly with these lighter grid lines. Um, and because we have Snap to Grid turned on, it's going to make it really easy for us to find that particular point. So what you're gonna do is select this top circle going to go back to your rotate tool. You're going to hold your alt or option key down and you're going to hover somewhere near the center of this uh, bottom circle. 
and you're going to click. And because you have Snap to Grid turned on again, it's going to just lock itself into that intersection. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option, click, let go of my uh, keyboard and the mouse button or trackpad button. Now in here, for this particular angle, I wanna type in something that's divisible, that divides into 360. Um, that way, when we do our final rotation, uh, we can rotate around perfectly. So that can be 10 degrees, it could be 20 degrees, it could be 18 degrees, it could be 36 degrees, um, it can be 60 degrees, it can be um, uh, 120 degrees if you want. Uh, for this, I'm going to do, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to do 20 degrees um, and I'm going to click on copy. Now you can, like again, you can use any number that you want. I'm going to click on copy and now I have this rotated copy uh, that's on top of this other one. Now, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, Pathfinder Divide tool and divide this up and, and so we can find this particular shape. If you can't see your Pathfinder tool, go to the Window menu and click on Pathfinder. I'm going to bring mine over here that we can see it. We're going to use the Divide Pathfinder. So I'm going to select all three and I'm going to click on Divide here. Now what Divide does is it's going to take all the overlapping shapes and make discrete shapes from it. Um, and that's how we're going to get this particular shape to use. So I'm going to click on Divide. Uh, and then because anytime I use these Pathfinder tools, it groups everything together. I'm going to go to the Object menu and Ungroup. And now I can go about deleting all the pieces that I don't want. I'm deleting everything except for this particular wedge. So I'm going to take this now and I'm going to rotate this around that same center that we just used. Um, using the same exact uh, angle that we used um, in the last rotation transformation. So select this wedge without moving it, go to the rotate tool. Again, you want to hold your alt or option key down and you want to click right in the center of this square, right at the one, two, three, four little grid squares from the left and four from the bottom uh, is going to get you there as well. So alt or option, click here let go of the mouse button, trackpad button, and the Alt Option key. We're going to leave in the same rotation, and we're going to click on Copy. Now what we want to do is we want to continue copying around the center. So to do that, you can go to the Object menu, Transform, Transform again, or Command or Control D, and keep copying this around the center. So now you have this cool little iris or pinwheel that you can uh, you know, amaze your friends with um, and say, look at this cool thing I just made in Illustrator. Or you could use it for a professional logo. Um, I'm just changing the colors here just to make it a little prettier. Uh, I don't know. Magenta and yellow might be really cool. Um, and whoops, move that. And let's just keep going, finish this up for you. So we have something really cool to look at. Um, and then I'm going to select all this and change my stroke color to none. So now I have this really awesome looking pinwheel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.